Hello, I'm Damien Barrett and welcome to the 2018 wash-up for the Port Adelaide Football Club brought to you by Karcher. Callum Toomey and Matthew Lloyd are here with me. And Lloydie, what is it with the power? Are they not performing at the level they should be or is it that the talent we thought they all had on their list is actually overrated? I think it's a combination of both of that, Damo. They got to 11-4, and four, but I, I didn't like their game style later in the year. They become slow, dour, just couldn't score. Obviously, their recruits let them down. Rockliffe and Watts weren't the players they hoped they'd yep. be. I'd give Motlop a tick and I just thought the fitness of Dixon and Ryder late in the year mm. just wasn't there. So just fell in a heap by the end of the I, year. I, I love the way David Koch yeah. approaches football, particularly mm. in years where they don't make finals. To him, it's very simple and, yeah. I, and I think it should be embraced by the entire competition mm. that failure to make finals is a yeah. failure and I, I like the fact mm. he's doing that and I like the fact he's asking questions. They're probably the flop of the season, aren't they? They come yeah. in with big expectations. They thought they were going to be a top four team. They bring in the guys to top up what they already had and it hasn't gone that way. Highlights. There's always some highlights in any team's year, no matter where you finish on the ladder. Cal, where did you see uh, the biggest highlights? Yeah, round 12 win over the Tigers, obviously the reigning premiers. This is when we all were pretty excited about what Port Adelaide might be able to produce this year. At this point, uh, they were on a bit of a roll. They were claiming scalps, and this was a good win on their home deck. Uh, we see the celebrations here, as they rightfully should have been pretty happy with that win, and all things were positive, but it was a bit of a false storm. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I mean, that was only just over the midway point. Uh, my highlight was uh, about four weeks earlier in the showdown, one of the uh, epic uh, showdowns. You can see the time, you can see the scores, and you can see the man seize the moment, Stephen Motlop, where he just did what he's done throughout his uh, entire career, this time at his new club, and, and kicked the match-winning goal in his first showdown for the power. And uh, it produced, I reckon, <laughs> the great post-match reactions of 2018. I haven't seen one of these for a while. It's Players good. and crowd members and coaches going nuts in the box and the 1-0 and zero for Ken Hinckley. It, uh, it looked good at that stage, didn't it? And as you said, a couple of weeks later, they also had another big win against another good premiership contender. But there was another touching moment this year too, wasn't there, with Todd Marshall returning to the game after his father had died, and that came not long after his mother had passed away. There was a 13-minute mark of the first quarter of his return game. The crowd acknowledged it with a, with a moment, and as did Hayden Crozier also, where he acknowledged that, that special return to the, the fray for Todd Marshall. Lordy, there's lots of low lights. So where do you want to start? I want to start with even before it even started this year, that why they recruited. Trent McKenzie, Lindsay Thomas and also Jack Tringo. I don't know why they went down that track and they were never going to have an influential role in the season mm. so they just really take opportunities away from kids and then you look at the other end of it Motlop, we'll give him a tick but uh, Rockloff, Rockliffe and obviously Jack Watts were bitterly disappointed. Yeah, they were pretty disappointed. Yeah. I think the, the reason behind Lindsay yeah. Thomas they would say is to mentor some of the younger guys mm. but again it's still taking a spot on yeah, the list isn't it, it is, that someone else yeah. could have had. Mm. Hamish Hartlett gets forgotten doesn't mm. he? I think when uh, when he was unavailable as of April this year when on the training track mm. he, he did a knee and look, I really rate Hamish Hartlett. I know he's not the absolute best yeah. player at that club but he's important to their mix mm. and, and he not being there this year cost them uh, dearly. Time to mark them out of 10. We'll start with you, please, Lee. Uh, they're just a four. Just the way they fell, fell in a heap late in the year. Can't give them any yeah. more than a four. Yeah, well, I'm not as generous. Uh, I didn't like what I saw in the last seven games, losing six of them and uh, finishing uh, they, so badly out of the eight. They, they let that showdown loss just get to them, didn't they? Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Obviously, the, the Josh Jenkins miss and all yeah. that, they just weren't able to recover from that. Who cleaned up, Kel? Yeah, they were really good in terms of Jared Pollock. I think uh, he looks like being their best and fairest, and then he might head to North Melbourne and pack his bags and, and off he goes. Look, it does appear that way now, doesn't it? Yeah, it does it has, look like... It has for about three months. Yeah, it has, and look, they've made a concerted effort, the ruse to get him, and... As much as the power might want to match the, the offer, they don't think they're capable of uh, fitting him in. So, look, he's the player that they probably can't afford to lose in many ways. He gives their midfield such a different look, complements what Wines, Boak and Sam Pell Pepper can bring, uh, pace and class and skill. And, and it's good to see him finally playing this sort of footy because he's obviously been a top-end talent and to get this out of his, himself is really good. If he doesn't win the best and fairest, I think it'll be Justin Westhoff. Uh, what a season this man had, uh, on, just on a one-year deal because of the age that he's at, but he just seems like he keeps getting better. He's one of those players that's probably frustrated you at times because he can be laconic, but this year, even in the last game of the season, when mm. the team was so bad, he kicks five and gave off <laughs> one he, late. He can play anywhere, can't he? Yeah, he he's can. gone under the radar for so long, been around for a decade more, but he's... He's done uh, it for a long time, time yeah. as you say. Yeah, yeah. He's, a key, he's key in that uh, 2007 grand final team. And he may well play 300 games the way he's still playing at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of people at, under pressure at the, uh, the power by Don and off field. I just want to ask you, Lloyd, uh, with their midfield of, of Wines and Ebert and Rockleaf and Pal Pepper, they all bring distinct talents to the mm. game, no doubt. But uh, are they too similar? Are they too much of the like? Oh, no doubt about it, Damo. You're spot on there. And then they lose probably their most important midfielder in uh, Jared Pollock, mm. most likely in the off-season. So uh, they, they should be losing one of these guys not one of their outside runners. Mm. One of some other guys that look like being out of the club in different ways, though, are those guys that you mm. mentioned before, Lloyd. Jack Changov and Trent McKenzie mm. managed four games between them. Lindsay Thomas has already gone. Mm. It's a, a, a 
an uh, experiment that didn't work because uh, they haven't been able to get any impact for them on the field. Do you think they'll move them both on? I'd say so. Mm. I can't see them playing there next year. Lord, do you scour the, the footage mm. over the course of a season to try and bring some lighter moments to the wash-ups? Well, I did scour uh, extensively for this one. Uh, Ken Hinckley, it's a big uh, uh, he's inspiring pre-match speech. And you see it all. The coaches, though, Kenny, you know what Kenny's like. He makes the coaches pack up all the chairs. But I just caught something in the back <laughs> corner. That is Brendan Lade. And he's saying, Nixie... You can do it. Vossi, I don't care what you've done. You've got three flags. I'm just going to eat like Damien Monkhurst does. I'm going to eat the snakes and the lollies there at the back there. And he just waits strategically at the back there when it's all done. And he says, let's go, boys. Let's go win a game of football. That was your so one funny moment for Port. <laughs> funny moment of the year. They, uh, they've got so many areas of improvement. I think you need to improve yeah. on your last for Port Adelaide. Though. Lotto, just with one of the serious moments for improvement, though, uh, I love the game. I love the way Paddy Ryder plays. But he's near the end, isn't he? And clearly he went down again late in the piece. But look, as we speak, they're after Scott Lysett. I think they need to get him. They will, I think. They, yeah. they look like being in the box. So it doesn't look like West Coast will match the offer. St Kilda's come in with a big offer, but it doesn't look like he wants to go there, which is fair enough. Goes back to South Australia and looks like being a really good pickup. Can if they, they play get them both in the same team, like Ryder well, and Lysett? You know Paddy Ryder better than we do. He mm. looks a much better player when he's the, the man, doesn't mm. he? So it might be an interesting mm. dynamic. Yeah. What about uh, yourself, Kelly? They need more out of Charlie Dixon. He's been a player that just haven't got enough out of. 26 goals this year from a big focal point. They threw the world at mm. him to get him from the Suns and he hasn't been able to deliver. You mentioned before they've been able to not score as much this yeah. year. They went from 98 points average down at 81. Mm. He's a big reason for that. It's interesting. We've all got these talented players. I'm going to talk about Chad Wingard yeah. that just don't quite perform. So that's something that Ken Inkley's got to try and answer. How can I get the best out of top-end talent? So Wingard, for mine, he's been a two-time All-Australian, but at times he's looked too heavy for mm. mine. He's got to get fitter. Uh, he went into the midfield, I thought was fantastic this year. So finding the right role for him to be, again, an All-Australian next year. They're hard to assess for next yeah. year, aren't we? Mm. As, as we go out of 2018 and work out what uh, they're going to do in 2019. I'll get you, you, I'll you to go first. be please. seduced by their talent again, don't yeah. I? And they'll be back in the finals. Again, I don't trust them, but far to wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm exactly the same. Across the board, 5-8 to eight for our predictions in 2019. Lordy, thank you. Cal, thank you. And that's the wash-up for Port Adelaide in 2018.